Ngayong umaga po, ang tatalakayin po natin ay Jehovah Shama. One of my favorites. Okay? Kasi sa pangalan na lang, eh, gustong gusto ko, eh, yung Shama. Masarap ka Shama si Lord. Dahil Shama ng Shama sa atin. Dapat Shama din tayo ng Shama sa Kanya. At uh, pagka we are conscious and constantly aware that God is Jehovah Shama, He is present, He is there, alam nyo, anumang plano mong kabuktutan, eh, mawawala yan. No? Mga, yung hilig mo, mawawala din. Pati na bisyo, dahil kung kasama mo siya, o kasama mo, kasama mo siya, hindi mo nagagawin ng mga bagay na hindi kalugod-lugod. Ah? Uh, Mamaya, we will answer a very delicate question concerning this. Now, what does it mean? Yan ang magandang tanong. Uh, what does it mean sa atin and how can we apply it sa ating uh, pang-araw-araw na pumumuhay, okay? That will inspire us and motivate us to enjoy life to the fullest. Well, apat ang powerful implication nito sa ating buhay. Una, Jehovah ya, uh, Shama means God is with us. When the Savior was born, He was given the name Emmanuel. Ang ibig sabihin ng Emmanuel sa Matthew chapter 1, verse 22 to 23, God is with us. Ha? Kasama natin ang Diyos. Pangalawa, Jehovah Shama, it implies God in us. Siya po ay suma sa atin. Ha? He made His dwelling among us to redeem us and He lives in us. Pangatlo po, God through us. He empowers us to live victoriously and empowers us to do the work of His kingdom, of the ministry. God, through us, He is with us, He is in us, and through us, He remove all the people na pwede niyang gamitin tayo pa. Pwede niyang gamitin ng mga angels and anything else, and anyone else, and yet God is through us. Oh, God through us. And then, lastly, God for us. Ito maganda, no? He will protect us and He will fight for us. So if you know this, God with us, God in us, God through us, and God for us. Wow! Kahit na anong klase yung pandemia, uh, don't, uh, don't expect na ihina ito. Palakas ang palakas. In the, in, in the last days, ganyan po ang mangyayari talaga, kapatid. Nakakatakot po in the last days. Pero if you have Jehovah Shama with you, ay very exciting, no? Uh, siyempre, nakakatangot, pero pagka na-realize mo that Jehovah Shama is with us, uh, it gives you courage, it gives you uh, excitement to face all the challenges and crises na pwede nating uh, maranasan sa buhay. Okay? Uh, there is a principle that I want you to know that God is so good, you cannot contest that. That God is faithful, that we cannot contest that dahil naranasan natin yan araw-araw. Say, napakadakila, tutupo yan, mahal na mahal niya tayo. Uh, you cannot uh, contest that and you can see the cross Yan po ang malaking pruweba na tayo, mahal na mahal ng Diyos. Okay? But, this God is holy and just. He cannot tolerate sin, rebellion, and idolatry. Any form of sin and wickedness, rebellion and idolatry, hindi pwedeng hindi niya pwedeng tolerate because he's, yes, he's a loving God, but he's holy and just. The question na gusto kong uh, uh, bitawan at uh, itrow sa inyo is, 
o kasama natin ang Diyos. Pero kasama ba natin siya pagka tayo gumagawa ng kasalanan? Pagka tayo tumalikod sa Kanya at sumamba sa Diyos Diyosan? Well, let the Bible answer this question. Okay? Uh, mahirap na kung ano, uh, baka usgan nyo pa ako. Let's read the following verses. Okay? Sa Exodus chapter 33, verses 1 to 3, ang background nito sa chapter 32, si Moses sumakyat sa Mount Sinai, chapter 31, para kunin ang Ten Commandments. And he stayed for 40 days and 40 nights. Tandaan nyo ha, katatapos lang nilang tumawid sa dagat alat uh, from four, uh, 430 years of bondage and slavery and oppression in Egypt. And God demonstrated great and mighty things. They saw it and they experienced it. Lalo nang tumawid sa Red Sea. And then, Masaya-masaya, they are in the, in the cloud na in experience. Nagutom, pinakain sila ni Lord through mana and quail, walang tubig. And then God uh, gave them water. And then God asked Moses to go up to Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. Kasi dapat malaman ng mga tao kung ano ang kasalanan. Unless you know the Ten Commandments, you know that you are committing adultery, that you are, uh, you are a murderer, that you are a liar, that you are uh, a, a robber or stealer, and that you dishonor your parents and you disobey the Lord. And po ang purpose ng Ten Commandments to know that what you're doing is sin and against God. Forty days and forty nights, lang. Ah, may git na isang buwan lang pagkatapos ng kamanghamang ang naranasan nila na ginawa ng Diyos sa Egypt and their exodus from Egypt. Ang bilis pong nakalimutan ng Diyos. At sila po ay ayan, naglasingan, nagsayawan, they were rebelling against God. And then, finally, they asked Aaron, the brother of Moses, to build an idol. Okay? And then they worship. And then they are offering people to that idol. So, the Lord ay na, napika, napuno ha? sa tigas ng ulo, sa kasalanan na ginawa at sa pagsamba sa Diyos Diyosan. And if not the prayer of Moses, namatay lahat sila. Exodus 32, verse 32. And God, in His mercy, pinatawad po ang kanila kasalanan. And then, God made a decision and said to Moses, and this is the word of God to Moses. Exodus chapter 33. Then the Lord said to Moses, Leave this place, you and the people you brought up out of Egypt. Go up to the land I promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, saying, I will give it to, the, to your descendants. I will send an angel before you and drive out the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hevites, and Jebusites. Then verse 3, But I will not go up with you. It is a place flowing with milk and honey, but I will not go with you because you are a stiff-necked people and I might destroy you on the way. Sila po yung nakagawa ng kasalanan na puno ang Diyos, but a promise is a promise to God. A covenant is a covenant to God that He will bring them to the land flowing with milk and honey. So instead of God going with them, it's an angel, so that they will experience the promised land. Ganyan po kabuti si Lord. But what is promised land without the presence of God? What is success without the presence of God? What is wealth and riches without the presence of God? What is this beautiful house and lot, and beautiful cars and abundance 
without the presence of God. It's nothing. It's nothing. Kayo mga tao na full, uh, full of greed and corruption, they want more lands, more money, more wealth and riches. Without God, that's nothing. Okay? So, I will not go with you because you are a very stiff-headed, hard-headed, stubborn, idolatrous people. I cannot go with you. Sabi ni Lord. So, pagka tayo gumawa ng kasalanan, tumalikod sa Diyos at sumasambas sa Diyos Diyosan, kasama ba natin ang Diyos? Well, let the Word of God say so. In the book of Judges, nine times binanggit ang katagang, and they did evil in the eyes of God. They have forsaken God, they provoke God, they worship other gods. And God was so angry and He gave them up. Let's read some of them. Magpasa lang tayo, no? After that whole generation had been gathered to their ancestors, the generation of Caleb and Joshua, another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what He had done for Israel. Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baals. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the peoples around them. They aroused the Lord's anger. And then Makita goes to verse 13, Because they forsook him and served Baal and the Astorets, in, anger, in his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of the raiders who plundered them, sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. Wherever Israel went out to fight, the hand of the Lord was against them to defeat them. Just as he had sworn to them, they were in great distress. Verse 16, Then the Lord raised up judges who saved them out of the hands of the raiders, of these raiders. Yet they would not listen to their judges, but prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. They quickly turned from the ways of their ancestors who had been obedient to the Lord's command. Wherever the Lord raised up a judge for them, he was with the judge and saved them out of the hands of their enemies as long as the judge lived. For the Lord relented because of their uh, groaning and under those who oppressed and afflicted them. But when the judge died, the people returned to ways even more corrupt than those of their ancestors, following other gods, serving and worshipping them. They refused to give up their evil practices and stubborn ways. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and said, Because this nation was violated, or has violated the covenant, I ordained for their ancestors and has not listened to me, I will no longer drive out before them any of the nations Joshua left when he died. And then you will see in chapter 3, verse 7, and then verse 12, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forget the Lord their God and served the Baals and Aseroths, and God gave them up, and God made them slave to their enemies. They oppressed them, and they live a very distressful life. Verse 12, again, the Israelites did evil. When they cried to the Lord, God will save them. And then, pagkatapos noon, they will do evil, in the eyes of the Lord, because they did evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Oab, power over Israel, and they oppressed them, and they suffered, and then they cried out to the Lord, and then God will deliver them. And then pagkatapos on, they did evil again in the eyes of God, prostituting themselves to other gods, worshiping other gods, turning their back against God. Nine times in the book of Judges, God gave them up. If you will read 1 Kings and 2 Kings, any kingdom who turned their back against God, they will suffer the consequences. Sila po ay uh, 
ini-invade ng mga malilit na bansa at sila po ay inoopresa at talagang kawawa ang kalagayan. Lalo na yung Northern Kingdom. Kaya sila po ay baagang nasakop ng Assyrian Empire noong 722 BC. Okay? They were scattered all around the world when they, they were conquered by the Assyrian Empire. And then 136 years later, year 556 BC, the Babylonian Empire conquered the Assyrian Empire. And by this time, the people of Judah and Jerusalem turned their back against God. Ayaw na makinig sa mga prophets. And they are worshipping all kinds of gods. And they are so corrupt. That's why God raised the Babylonian Empire to conquer the Assyrian Empire. And they marched to Babylon and they destroyed Jerusalem and burned the temple. This is the, that's the consequences of sin, wickedness, rebellion, and idolatry. Yes, God is with us. He is for us, through us, and in us. But according to the Word of God, kung tayo po ay nagkakasala, hindi natin kasama Diyos. Ha? Kung ikaw na may asawa, naging immoral ka, hindi mo nakasama ang Diyos. Ha? Pagka ikaw ay gumagawa ng mga bagay na, na talagang napuprovoke ang Diyos, nagagalit ang Diyos, hindi mo nakasama si Lord. Huwag niyong sabihin na eh, Jehovah Shama, yeah, kung kasama mo si Lord. Dahil pagkakasama mo si Lord, you are aware, ay hindi ka gagawa ng kabuktutan ang mga bagay na hindi ka lugod-lugod sa harapan ng Diyos. Okay? God cannot tolerate sin because He's a holy God. Be holy, sabi ni Lord, for I am holy. And remember, the covenant of God are conditional sa obedience natin. Sa pagsunod natin kay Lord at pagtatapat kay Lord. That's why we emphasize sa TFBC yung pagtitiwala, pagsunod, pagtatapat, paglilingkod, pagsamba, pagmamahal kay Lord para ang pagpapala niya ang lulukob sa atin. Hindi po uh, uh, matolerate ng Diyos na ikaw ay born again tapos nagpatatampi sa kasalanan at gumagawa ng kabuktutan kaya nag-iisa ka na lang. Hindi mo kasama si Lord. At instead na kasama mo si Lord, mga demonyo na at mga kampo niya ang mga kasama mo. And I will assure you, maging miserable ang buhay. Nakakalungkot. Ang ganda-ganda ng plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo dahil sa ginawa mong kasalanan, naging miserable. But God never planned that. It is you who choose to disobey and to choose to do your own way. Kasyama natin si Lord kung tayo po at kasama niya tayo kung tayo po ay gumagawa ng mga bagay na nakakalugod sa kanyang pangalan. Look at these examples of God's presence to the people who put their trust in Him. Okay? In the midst of all this impossible situation, because they trust the Lord God Almighty, and they, they are so committed to Him, look at what the Lord has done. Look at the three Hebrew young men in Daniel chapter 3. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nakalakhan nila kahit na nasa exile sila na meron lang isang Diyos. At ang Diyos na ito, ang Diyos na pinakamakapangyarihan sa lahat. Dakila. At siya ay gumagawa ng kamanghamangha. Siya ang hari ng lahat. Siya ang Panginoon ng, mga, ng lahat ng Panginoon. That's why when King Nebuchadnezzar nagpagawa ng 90 feet na Diyos Diyosan, gawa sa ginto, ang kanyang utos, lahat na nasasakupan niya, at pagka narinig nila ang banda, ang musiko, lahat ay luluhod at magpatira pa at sasamba sa Diyos Diyosan na ginawa ni Nebuchadnezzar. To their surprise, there were three Hebrew young men who did not bow down to the God of Nebuchadnezzar. 
Of course, the report, he was so furious. And then he gave them another chance. If you will bow down right now, I will spare you. Pero ano sabi po ni Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Sabi niya, O king, sabi niya, we believe that there is only one God and we cannot bow down to this God. And sabi niya, we are more than willing na kami ay itapon mo sa ornong yan but remember this, our God is able to deliver us from this fiery furnace. And then sabi nila, if God will not deliver us, if God will not join us sa fiery furnace, sabi niya, mas gugustuhin pa namin itapon dyan kesa sumamba, lumuhod sa Diyos Diyos ang iyan. Kaya lalong nagalit si Nebuchadnezzar seven times, lalong pinainit ang oro. Yung nagtapon sa kanila, nilamon na ka po'y namatay. But look at these three Hebrew young men who stood their ground, who believe in God, and who are so committed. <laughs> I tell you, fiery furnace is a scary thing. Ah, yan po, Kumbaga sa Roman, sa Roman uh, Empire, the cross, yun, yun ang malaking panakot sa mga nagre-rebelde, yun ang Jehovah Shama. Talagang tuwan-tuwa si Lord. Pero mo, suddenly, there were only three people were thrown sa fiery furnace and then Nebuchadnezzar saw four people and the fourth one is like the Son of Man. At sila po'y nagkukwentuhan, parang, uh, parang nasa air condition sila sa loob ng orno. And that's the supernatural miracle na naranasan ni Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. Bakit nila naranasan? Because they believe that their God is Jehovah Shama. Amen po ba? Pwede ba natin palapakan si Lord? Pangalawa, Diba, na-set up si Daniel. Ah, dahil ingit na ingit sila, close siya sa hari, ingit na ingit sila sa galing niya, and they set him up. And nakapagpapirma sila sa hari na whoever worship other than their king will be thrown sa lion's den. To cut the story short, na-set up nga and siya po ay tinapon sa mga leon, si Daniel. And the king tried to save him. But Daniel said, uh, You signed it, nakataya ang pangalan mo, don't worry, because Jehovah Shama is with me. Biro mo, ang mga malalaking leon na gutom na gutom ay naging kuting lang ah, because Jehovah Shama joined Daniel who stood his ground who remained faithful and committed to the Lord and he experienced the presence of God Jehovah Shama number three I see Joseph he was thrown so, so well by his brothers. He was sold to Egypt, a slave. And he became a slave in Egypt, a warden, a prison. But you will see every now and then, but God was with Joseph, Jehovah Shama. But God was with Joseph. That's why God's favor is upon Joseph, Jehovah Shama. And after 13 years of slavery, he became the second command in Egypt, the prime minister. Why? Jehovah Shama. If you will see these stories from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, from Daniel to Joseph, and even Paul, who experienced unimaginable sufferings and persecution, and 
all kinds of trials that dinanas ni Apostle Paul, anong sabi niya sa Philippians, I can do all things through, that's Jehovah Shammah, through Christ who strengthens me. We are not exempted sa mga sufferings, okay? Lahat po tayo, born again o hindi, we will experience all kinds of problems and trials and testings and sufferings. Crisis. Young and old, rich or poor, nakaranas ng ha, natinag sila sa pandemya ito. And when the calamities, super typhoons or earthquake, tidal waves will come, we're not exempted to this. And many more challenges coming because we are now in the last days. But if Jehovah Shama is with you, why afraid? Why worry? Why panic? The God who delivered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego a fiery furnace, the God who delivered Daniel in the lion's den, the God who bless Joseph out of slavery in Egypt and the God of Paul who has overcome and he said to the Romans we are we are more than conquerors we are more than overcomers the great apostles they all died a horrible death except of course to John all of them all of them overcomes why? Because they experience the presence of God. God Almighty who promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And He remained faithful to them. Why? Because they remained faithful to God. That's why the challenge to all of us, we want to experience Jehovah Shama. Kumapit po tayo. Let's honor Him, obey Him, and be faithful to Him. Kaya kahit na nung klaseng inaharap mong pagsubok at problema, you will surely overcome. Amen po ba?